Hi there. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the redirection commands, the angle brackets, and the pipe command, which is the vertical bar, uh, to do some interesting things uh, with your input and output for your files uh, and your, your programs. Uh, so let's, uh, let's jump right in. I happen to be on the Myth computer with the, uh, in a folder where I have a Hello World program. And if I run the Hello World program, it just uh, prints out Hello World. Okay, not too uh, great, confusing there. And let's say that I wanted to uh, print Hello World, but I wanted to actually send it into a file. Well, in Linux, all you have to do is say Hello, and then the uh, greater than symbol, and then a file name. So uh, Hello Output.txt. And it doesn't actually show you anything because all the output is going into hello output. So if we look at hello output, then we can see that it now says hello world. So that's called redirecting to an output, redirecting standard out, as it turns out. Uh, things that normally get printed from your program go into the output file that you redirect it to. Okay, so that's, uh, that's fairly simple. Uh, you can do the reverse as well. Oh, and by the way, um, that uh, right angle bracket should look somewhat familiar in uh, the sense that it looks, uh, it's, it's reminiscent of uh, C out, um, although C out uses two angle brackets. Uh, so let's actually go back uh, to another folder that I have uh, called add two numbers. And in add two numbers, uh, let me show you the actual uh, code. If you look at add two numbers, it basically just reads in two doubles and it ends up um, adding them together and printing the result out. Not too, not too hard. Okay, and if we actually run it, uh, it says uh, the program will add two doubles, please enter a double, 24.6, and let's see, let's do another one, uh, 19.4, or something like that. And the sum in this case is 44, so that's pretty simple. Now, what if you wanted to have your program actually read in data? Let's say you were testing your program and you didn't want to type the numbers in. Uh, you could do the following. You could have a, an input file. In fact, I have one here called two numbers.txt, and uh, there are two numbers in there. And if I say add two numbers and then I say, oh, read in from two numbers.txt with the less than character, uh, any input that the program requires, it will look for it in two numbers.txt. Now, you have to make sure that the uh, input file is properly formatted to give you exactly the type of input that you're looking for, uh, but, uh, but this is the way you actually uh, read it in. Okay, so let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, it actually says, uh, this program will add your doubles, and then it says, please, please enter a double, and then nothing, and then please enter a double, and then nothing, and then the sum is 42. Uh, no returns or anything. Uh, that's because the, the shell actually forwards the information, the numbers, to your program, and then it does the printing on the screen, and you're bypassing that step by using the less than uh, to actually read in from the file. So your output will not necessarily look exactly the way you think it should, uh, but rest assured that the input is uh, going into your file. Now, in CS107, we rarely use... Uh, input this way. We rarely ask the user to actually type anything uh, for our programs. We generally do it from, uh, if we want to read something in, we will use a file. So uh, we'll learn about that as the course goes along, about how to uh, read from a parameter. So in that case, it would be something like add two numbers, and then it would be num1 and num2, or something like that. Uh, or it would be a file. Like that's one way to do it, or it would be some you know, two numbers.txt and it would read it in. It would not work now because there's, uh, no, it, we, I didn't build that into the program. Uh, so that's, um, that's how you use the redirection commands. Now, a somewhat related command, but actually, in, in fact, a much more powerful uh, command is the uh, pipe command, which is the, uh, it's the vertical bar. And what it does is it allows you to do something like this, ls-al. Uh, gives you a listing like this. But what if I wanted just the last um, the last line, like the last file in here? In fact, let's say I do the, my favorite command, lsalrt, -A which says which uh, files were last in line, okay, or, or were most recently uh, changed, okay? In fact, let's just do it this way, ls-a, uh, 
uh, just LRT, so we don't have the, uh, the special files in there. Okay, so in fact, two numbers would be the last one. Well, what I can do is I can use this pipe command that says take the output of LS and send it while line by line to some other program. Right? So many times you'll, uh, you'll do this. Let's say I wanted to find out how many files I had. I could use a program called word count, WC, which counts how many lines there are in, the, uh, in a file that it gets passed. Right? So in this case, ls-lrt will then get piped into word WC, and it will say, in this case, it will actually be wrong by one, because it will say, it will count the total 12 line uh, up here, and then it will count the uh, one, two, three, four, actually, so it should say five if this uh, works right. Yep, there we go. Uh, if I do ls-1, uh, that would actually do it. ls-1 just lists the files, and then WC would actually say four, four lines, and uh, let's see, the 62 is the characters. Um, I think the, I think it's words, line, yeah, it's words, lines, characters. Uh, or actually, it might be the other way around. Sorry, it's lines, words, characters. So in this case, I happen to have the same number of words as lines because it just printed one word per line. Uh, but that's how you use the pipe command. Um, you can actually do it. You can pipe as many things as you want through here. Uh, so you can, let's, let's just do another example here. Um, there is a command called cut, which says uh, take a line and break it up by one character. Uh, it's not for full strings, it's just for one character. So if I say cut and then dash D and period, that will say uh, the delimiter that I'm cutting on is the period character. And then if I say dash F2, actually let's just do F1, it will say print the first column of all the broken up lines. So if there were many periods in there, it would print just the first column. Okay, this would actually be nice to do on our uh, file list if we didn't want the extensions, for instance, right? So if I just do cut dash D period dash F1 and then start typing things like add to numbers dot C. Well, if I hit return, it actually just cuts out the dot C and it gives me the first field when I break it up by the period. So that's kind of nice. If I did another one, A, B, C, dot, D, E, F, well, guess what? A, B, C. Okay, well, what's nice is you can run that on a file, but you could also do ls-1 and then pipe through to the cut command, cut dash D period dash F1, and guess what? It stripped all the lines of our file like that. Okay, now, what if I wanted to know uh, how many lines, uh, let's, what if I just wanted the last one? Okay, well, there's a command called tail. And tail actually gives you the last 10 on, uh, by default, lines in a file. So if I, if I do dash tail dash N1, it will just give me the last line. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and then I end it, it just gives me the last line, G, H, I. Okay, so watch this. LS dash 1, cut dash D period dash F1, and then tail dash N1 says, okay, give me a directory of just the file names. Pass that to the cut file and just give me the first field when I, when I uh, have a delimiter of a period, and then give me just the last line. Okay, when I run that, it will say two numbers, right? Because it, it first got two, all the files, two numbers was the last one, it, it cut out the, uh, took off the extension, and then just gave me the last line in that. So you can pipe these files through, um, through there all you want. Uh, now I have an interesting example here. Uh, if you use the wget command, um, the wget command actually allows you to uh, read in a file or capture a file from a website. It actually just downloads it, right? And it's probably going to be an HTML file because that's what most files on the internet are. But um, I happen to have a one uh, queued up here, although I'm just looking at it and it's pretty long. www.payroles.musique.com slash P-A-R-O-L-E-S Taylor underscore Swift. If I can spell Swift underscore, or rather dash, look what you make me do lyrics. I understand this is what the kids are watching these days, or listening to these days, comma P192724. All right, that will actually pull the file down. If I have a dash O, it, it will put it into a particular file for me, a nice, easy to remember look.html file. And if I typed it right, 
it says connected and it says all this stuff and says uh, waiting response and it actually pulled it down. Now, if we look at look.html, well, it's a bunch of HTML and JavaScript and so forth, but somewhere up here, it actually, and it's way up at the, near the top, I think there, uh, is that it? Um, I think that's it right there, there we go. So um, this is the, uh, the actual lyrics, and, but it's got all this other HTML in there. So I thought we'd, I'd write a little command that I, I did practice this, I don't know this one off the top of my head, to actually, in one line, strip out just the uh, details of the lyrics, right? So watch this. You can use a command called sed, which actually um, allows you to pull out, uh, it'll actually allow you to change uh, particular words in a file, but it'll also allow you to find something and then print the rest of the file, okay? So if I do sed and then this command, it looks like this, id equals lyrics, remember I've already looked through the, uh, the command, and then I say uh, a couple other incantations here that says basically um, don't uh, or just just start uh, typing at the or, or start uh, printing out after it finds that ID lyrics. That happens to be the line right before the start of the lyrics. So if I just type this command, I'm going to clear the screen and type this command, and you can see it'll print out a whole bunch of stuff, but then the, right at the top is just the beginning of the lyrics, except for that first line there. The rest of it is just the lyrics. Now, what else is in this lyrics? Well, first of all, I want to get rid of this, uh, this line here. So it actually, what I can do is I can run this command. Uh, I just did the up arrow key, by the way. I can pipe this through tail dash uh, n plus two. Oops, it's not actually looking nice on my screen here. It's maybe a, let me reset the thing here. Okay, let me try this again. Uh, tail dash n and then if I do plus two, it will give me the entire thing minus the first line. So it'll start on line two, as it turns out. And uh, it didn't work. Let me see why that's the case. Oh, you know, um, let's see. Tail dash n plus two. It actually should work. Uh, don't know why it didn't do that. Well, let's keep going on. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. So it got, I don't know why it didn't do it that time, but there it goes. So the first line of our file is the end, uh, or the first line of the lyrics. Okay, so now we're, we're there. Now we can say, okay, um, let's get rid of those pesky br and that div command that uh, if, you, if you saw it, that's actually located in there too. Well, I'll just use another sed command and I'll say sed replace, oh, here we go again with the weird characters here. Sed, re, let me reset it again. Sometimes it actually uh, does this. Okay, uh, let's do sed and then s slash br, which is what we're trying to remove and remove all of them in the file on each line. And then we're also going to remove the uh, div as well. And these are all like commands you can learn to, to do, but I'm, no, the whole point is that I'm piping each command through the next one, right? And then I'm going to uh, actually use another sed command to find the last part of the uh, after the lyrics, the first line after the lyrics, and then remove everything from then on. Okay, so this should, uh, let's see, act like this and that, and then that will almost work, right? It will almost work, but now we need to, uh, you'll see what happens when we do this, uh, maybe we won't. Let's see. Unknown option. Let's see. Said there. Said there. Um, let's see. We did that one. That one looks right. Let's do this. Let's do one at a time and see which one I screwed up. Uh, let's see. It might be the... Let's try that. We'll try the BR one and the div one and see what happens. Nope. Same problem. So maybe it's the, that one. So let's do there. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now let's see if I can retype this correctly. Uh, said, oh, I know what I did. Said, and then uh, let's see, it's going to be, it's going to be s slash uh, that. There we go. I missed a, missed a character on there. And then said class equals 
QNT act, act Q like that, and that should, if I did it right here, that should go all the lyrics except the last line is still there. So if I do the whole command again and then pipe it through head this time, dash n dash one, which says give me the first lines, but except for the last one, then look what it did, right? So one liner, now again, I had to look through this and it took me a little while to figure out, but one liner took that whole crazy HTML file and turned it into just the lyrics from the uh, from the thing. And then we can also, if you want, we could continue this. We could say, okay, now count all the lines that actually say, look, actually just count all the lines. All right, and just give me the number of lines. Okay, 69 lines in the output. And if we say, just look for the ones that actually say, have look in them and count those lines, that is 26. So 26 out of the 69 lines are have look in them. So uh, that seems like a fair percentage of lines that have look in them. All right, if we just wanted to see them all, we could take off the word count and just say, oh look, there's all the lines that have the, uh, the look in there. All right, so that is the pipe and the uh, redirection commands. Uh, that you can uh, use if you get a little bit more involved into Unix. Thanks.